Thank you so much for, for, for joining us and, and being here this morning. My name is Sonia Manzano. You might know me from Sesame Street or from you. Thank you. Or, or, or Alma's Way, which is my latest effort on, uh, on PBS. And it's so, I'm so happy to be here. This has been so remarkably long in coming. Uh, I see uh, Adolf. I mean, it's been opening next year for the past 10 years. I know. I know, I don't, right, the, the men had hair, I, I had long hair, I, 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 I weighed less. Uh, there were so many administrations that, that, uh, that changed hands, and with every administration, new relationships had to be formed. And of course, everything cost more as we waited, uh, but... Um, I'm happy that we're finally here this morning. I was worried about the weather, and then I thought, I don't have to worry about the weather because it's a building now, and we're inside. <laughs> and it's not the bus. I know the bus has been running around for, for a very long time, but, but now we really uh, um, have a building. And of course, I'm, I, I have to admit that when I was growing up in the Bronx, I always thought that I wanted to live in El Barrio. To me, Spanish Harlem was Puerto Rican Central, and I didn't know why we had to live in the Bronx. Spanish Harlem had carts, freaky, you know, people selling fried fish in push carts in the Bronx, and there was more music, and I thought it was the hip Puerto Rican place to be. But I think that now it's the Bronx. The Bronx is just stepping up, and uh, uh, more than I think than any other borough for our people, and for all children, of course, uh, everywhere, and I'm, I'm thrilled about that. I'm thrilled that I share a space with that other Sonia from the Bronx. <laughs> Justice Sonia Sotomayor, we have a room back there that we're going to share. It's going to be a, a literary space. She has also been tireless in working and supporting the Bronx Children's Museum for, uh, for many years. I've always been very interested in children. You know, uh, they have their own ideas. That's why we say to them, where did you get such an idea when they do something really weird or... Who told you to do that? It came from their own selves and the way they view the world. And that's why they need a place like this to expand that, that, um, that kind of thinking and do what um, they uh, want to be. So uh, w one more thought about the justice. She always said to me that she loved uh, Perry Mason. And I always say to her, well, I loved Lucille Ball. <laughs> And I'm really happy that that's how it happened and it didn't switch around because you wouldn't, certainly wouldn't want me to be in her position. <laughs> so, so that said, let us start our chats. Um, we're going to try to keep the comments uh, concise. This beautiful bracelet that I'm wearing is really a cattle prod. So uh, <laughs> if anybody goes over, eh, eh, you're, you're, you're going to get it from me. And first, we'd like to uh, welcome, please, uh, Hope Harley, founding president, Bronx Children's Museum, board of directors. <laughs> yes, we are not hopeless. That's an old joke that I've used for too many years. Um, good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hope Harley. I um, was the founding uh, board president for the museum until the end of last year, December 31st, ended my tenure. But, <laughs> and Ruben says, me too. Anyway, Ruben had hair, Adolfo had hair, I had black hair, um, I wasn't a grandmother. All kinds of things happened since this idea came, came forth. Um, you'll hear from, um, the person who is now the board president in just a minute, she's a wonderful person, because you know who else could follow me? I know, that's bad, that was bad. Anyway, um, the Bronx Children's Museum started as an idea by a group of folks who lived and worked in the Bronx, and we met in the office of this gentleman right here, uh, former borough president Adolfo Carrion, in March of 2005. So just think back to where you were at that time, if you can remember. Um, there were some people in the room who were with us at that time. There were some people in the room who were probably in elementary or high school at that time. But here we are in 
you know, the culmination of our dream. In 2010, we made the best decision we ever made. And that was we hired this woman over here, Carla Precht, who you will all see here. The, the, the dynamo known as Carla Precht to um, come and lead us on our path to this. I truly don't think it could have been done without her, but that's, that's me. I think there are other people who, uh, who know that too. We've always known that the museum is and was special. We knew it when we were you know, doing little classroom visits or, or after we got our big purple bus and um, took our bus on the road or, or went to community fairs or wherever. We always knew it was special. But this is, it's just beyond. I, I told Sonia a minute ago, I didn't even envision this. I had no vision of what this would look like. I just knew that we needed to create a museum for the children of the Bronx. And those of you who know me, and I've said this to so many, that every time I come in here, I cry. But they're tears of joy <laughs> now. I've cried many tears over the years that were not joyful, but, but these are tears of joy. A few weeks ago, we had a group of school children in here, and that was what I was waiting for. Um, it was the most magical thing, and I did cry. I'm not going to cry today, though. Um, and I did cry because that was, that was it. That was what I wanted to see. I wanted to see kids running around and splashing in water and banging on drums, which were very, very loud. Um, and one little boy touched me in particular. Uh, when you walk around the museum, you'll see that we have um, a little piece. It has a little rowboat. And there was one little boy sitting there, and he was pretend fishing. And I don't know, it just touched me in some kind of way. Um, Last week, a parent visiting with her children said that kids will discover things in the museum that will spark a passion in them. Our job is done. That's the best compliment we could ever receive from anyone. So I thank you to everyone in this room who helped us along this journey, whether you uh, joined us today um, and will be part of our family from here on, or whether you were at that meeting in 2005 or anywhere along the way. Um, I thank all of our hardworking, talented, creative staff. I can, you cannot find a better group of people. I challenge anyone. Um, I thank all of our board members, all of the people who have been part of our board, both past and present. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, our fearless leader, she tells me she has some fears, but, <laughs> but not today, um, Carla Precht. And now, as I promised, I'm going to introduce you to the lovely young woman who is now the president of our board of directors, our new leader, Arlene Bascom. Thank you, Hope. I'm not that young. Might be a little younger, but not that young. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to start by saying, Carla, I always say tenacity is that she is the definition of it. Because without her tenaciousness and her vivacity, everything, her passion for this, we wouldn't be standing here and seeing this um, today and the children of the Bronx. And we all, everyone, I'm from the Bronx, so I know. Uh, you know, just really our heartfelt thank you, really. So as you heard, um, my name is Arlene Bascom. Um, I'm originally, I was born in Jamaica, my family and I, we immigrated here, so part of the whole, my, my life and story basically fits in with a lot of the life stories of um, many of you who are here and also the children who will be, um, you know, occupying the space. Um, so um, I know what it was to grow up in the Bronx and not to have a space like this and to, um, you have to go outside of the Bronx to a museum or to um, experience a lot of other cultural things. So um, I'm also marking my age, but I'll go on. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
You know, we're so proud that this building is now open. And um, as you heard, it took, it took, a, it took a while. Um, I'm a newbie to the whole lifting process, so everything is really Hope, Sonia, Sonia, and, um, and Carla, and um, her amazing team that's been working with her here. Um, so we all know that Saturday, December 3rd, the doors will officially be opening, and hey. And so even though in our minds we've been a museum within and without walls, you know, for a while, we are now a museum within walls. Um, we will also still have our museum bus, which we're getting another one, you know, ready as well. But right now let's focus on what we're going to do indoors with the children and in the space, which is safe, um, but which is very, um, it allows children to be, um, be hands-on. We're not going to be telling children no. We might tell them to be careful with the running, but you know everything. And it's all about them seeing, touching, experiencing, and really, um, you know, exploring, right? And um, you know, there are other places that they're all about. You know, just maybe the kids coming in. It's a place to drop them off. The children are going to interact with the exhibitions here because they're STEAM oriented. Everything here is science, technology, um, engineering, um, arts. And math, and you can see that already from the space and all the lovely art, all the lovely exhibits, which you'll all get a chance to see. Um, and for a limited time, admission will be free for all visitors. We're still working out some dynamics and things, but from now until when we make that announcement or other things happen, we'll it'll, admission will be free. We do, of course, will welcome any donations that anybody of any kind would like to make. I have to put that in. <laughs> so um, every one of you in this room deserves our thanks, but I want to call out a special few, and I just want to take a moment to just ask all our current board members to just stand so we can just acknowledge you as well. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. There, is so, there are many more, but there's, um, you know, there's something called work schedules. Um, but at any rate, we thank everyone who's here and even those who are in absentia. Um, at this time, I wanted, you know, I, we would be remiss if we did not thank every and all of the, well, not all of them, but because the elected and city officials. <laughs> that could take all day. <laughs> um, but the uh, elected and city officials, um, some of who are also here with us, so um, bear with me. Um, our current borough president, Ms. Vanessa Gibson. Yes, thank you. She was a believer in us before she stepped into the political arena and continued to be a partner with us, so thank you. Um, her brother from another mother, <laughs> former Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., as well as another former brother, for, uh, former Bronx Borough President uh, Adolfo Carrion Jr., who was also was actually part of the Genesis team for this, and then, of course, his successors, um, predecessors after that, you know, uh, successors um, t took over. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we also have with us New York State Assembly member Latoya Joyner, who has been instrumental in securing $4 million in state funding, signage, and brick and mortar. Did she stand up? Oh, okay, this, her representative is here, okay. Um, New York State Senator Jose M. Serrano. I saw him earlier, okay. A longtime supporter and leader in the arts and cultural institutions in the Bronx. And um, New York City Council Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala, who I think she's got her representative here. She is a former city council speaker. Um, she was um, former city council speaker Melissa Mark Vivierto and Vanessa Gibson were pivotal funders and supporters of the museum and its new electric bus to be procured in 2024. That's what I was talking about. That it's, it's going to continue to be our uh, uh, um, museum outside of the walls. And that takes the programming to um, schools and shelters and parks and special, event, and special community events. Continuing on, New York City Parks Commissioner Sue Donahue. Um, I don't think she's here. Oh, I'm looking too far afield. Missed you the other night. Lisa Soren is not here, so you don't have to say her name. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, 
yeah, Art Students League, congratulations on your honor. <laughs> and um, so Sue Donahue is here with us, who's with the New York City Parks Department, and has given us the space to transform, into, which we have transformed into what you see today, and now to operate Gorgeous Children's Museum. Uh, uh, she's probably stuck in traffic, but she's got her... No, no, I'm... <laughs> Our next, <laughs> gracias, hermano. <laughs> we do this all the time with each other. Gracias, hermano. <laughs> so um, she's not here yet. She's probably stuck in traffic. Oh, here she is now. Oh, yes. Commissioner Cumbo. Yay. The lady in pink. <laughs> I see you got the, you got the, yes, we all, always. <laughs> So thank you, um, you know, um, Lori Cumbo, who with the mayor's office has stood by the need for the Children's Museum in the Bronx. Um, and, okay, continuing on, it's a long list I told you before. <laughs> Our deputy commissioner, New York City Department of Design Construction, Salvatore Cali, right here. Is who's here to represent the city and its entity who's overseeing the design and construction of the museum. Uh, assembly members um, whom we'd like to acknowledge, and if they're here, uh, Assembly Member Chantel Jackson, uh, Karine Reyes, Armando Septimo, Udelka Tapia, okay, Romania Inia from U.S. Congress Torres Office, no, uh, Fidel Malena from U.S. I'm sorry, New York State Governor's Ho Governor Hochul's Office, yay, Governor Hochul. <laughs> um, Paula, okay, and forgive me, blame it on the head, not the heart. Kaikas and Alina Dowell, um, and from and Valerie Vasquez from the mayor's office. Okay, Jacina Aponte, Bronx Commission Commissioner of New York City Parks, and I can't read that one. And Daniel Saldana, Executive Director of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce and former Bronx Children's Museum board member. Also, I'd like to um, add Isabel Marrero from U.S. Congressman Espaillat's office and Dr. Armina Vega Ferrer from the New York State Education Department of Regents. I know my, um, my backup team will um, remind me or let me know if there's anyone that comes in that we have not, I, have the, I have not had the opportunity to acknowledge, but I'm going to continue on to some p pillar funders who have helped us achieve this dream and are already committed to sustaining us going forward. Um, I'm doing this alphabetically, so um, the, yeah, no worries. <laughs> but Adolfo Carrion has to leave in 10 minutes, and as he was the, one of the first administrator, maybe give him a moment and then come back to your uh, hey, remarks. Hey, this is a good, that that's okay? a good, that's a good place to up. We can have him speak, and then I'll, I'll acknowledge the other folks, who okay. are the corporate Thank folks. You. Thank you. Adolfo Carrion. <laughs> I am so sorry to bogart the program like this, <laughs> but, but um, I'm going to give you a little uh, heads up about an hour in advance of the announcement that's about to happen today at 1130 at the Queens Museum. Um, I will join the mayor and a number of other uh, citywide officials to announce that uh, a new uh, soccer stadium will be built in New York here in New York City, next to, at Willits Point, along with 2,500 units of affordable housing. So, as the, as the, I think Sue Donahue identifies very closely with this as commissioner. As the commissioner of housing, I cannot miss this or be late. <laughs> but I, I have to tell you, uh, Sonia Hope, Carla, uh, number 13, number 14, my friends, my fellow Bronxites, my dear, beloved fellow Bronxites, because this is our beautiful borough in, in our wonderful city. Um, this is so personally meaningful to me, because I remember those 
birthing moments for this. Um, it was it was a group of people full of love for the kids of the Bronx saying, enough is enough, we've got to do something here at, at home and do the right thing for our children. Um, and I'm so grateful to Ruben Diaz Jr. Um, for picking up the torch and running with it, the longest of all of us, because after I left, he, was, he had the honor and, and the challenge of, of serving for three terms as borough president. <laughs> and having to deal with Carla Precht that whole time. <laughs> and, and, then, and then the wonderful Vanessa Gibson who, who took that torch and continued running with it. And when you were in, in the city council as well. All, all, of, all of the elected officials who participated in this, all the community leaders, the board, crazy committed board. I mean, these folks, against all odds, you know, it was like, you know, a rubber ducky bus, right? It was, they paced, they paced, no, no, I'm saying it, I'm saying, Carla. <laughs> Muchacha. <laughs> I'm saying it in the best and loving way possible because I remember when we first got the bus <laughs> and, and, and the whole notion of it, of getting out there among, among the, the kids. I have a confession to make, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna run out. I wish I could be here for the f cutting the ribbon, but and Carla and uh, uh, I think uh, yeah, somebody else. Yeah, you gave me a, they gave me a little private tour during instruction, so I met them. I came by myself, and and it was early in the morning, and I walk in here. And they're showing me the place, and we're up here, just around the middle of this floor. And I just lost it. I lost it. I was embarrassed. I started to cry. Tears just gushing out. I'm like, guys, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm walking this way. You guys walk that way. I felt that um, something important happened in our city for our children, our beloved children. So to all the people, that made this happen, that made this possible, that, um, that are gonna give to so many generations a gift. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Thank you, congratulations, I love you all. This is beautiful. Muchas gracias a usted también. <laughs> so. Thank you. So we'll continue. We'd like to acknowledge our, as I was saying before, we'd like to acknowledge some of our pillar funders. Um, the Altman Foundation, our first funder and one who has never left our side. Just Amazon, which will be sponsoring free afternoons once a week and extended hours once a month starting in spring 2023. Our representative from Amazon. There they are. Oh, there they are. And you all know that when you go on to Amazon and purchase things, you can set up, you know, your favorite charity or something, you know, organization. So please do that because then Amazon will donate, you know, money to us. Well, choose us. <laughs> choose the Bronx Children's Museum. I thought I'd just put that in there as my PA, PSA. <laughs> um, Bronx Care, which has continuously propelled us uh, forward, and especially um, Peter Chairman, who, uh, Sherman, who's uh, actually chairman of the pediatrics and board, of, um, vice, and he's also the board vice president. Um, he's unfortunately he's got a personal matter taken care of, but he has this wonderful representative here with us today. So thanks to Bronx Care. Okay, Con Edison, there, um, and their early. Capital Grant supported the waterways, and which you'll see, I hope, and um, and they unwaveringly and their unwaveringly support of our environmental program. So thank you, Con Edison. Montefiore Einstein, which just committed to a multi-year grant, and we who we turn to, yes. <laughs> Prayer and, ta and talking, and someone and someone who will not be named, <laughs> but who is greatly appreciated. <laughs> Gracias, hermano. 
Igualmente a usted. <laughs> and um, our incredible tireless board, of, I mentioned before, but I you know, had to bring them up again. And um, the incomparable, incomparable Sonia Manzano, she has inspired us all, as well as a generation of children, other, of other children. And you'll see that we have dedicated quiet space, as I mentioned earlier, called Sonia's Corner. It's um, to honor um, her and um, an un otra Sonia. <laughs> uh, her and Justice um, Sonia Sotomayor, both of, the, both of whom have just been um, really tireless in their support um, for the organization. Um, now, please, a giant round of applause for our organization. I welcome Paula, right? You're coming? Who's coming up? Who's next? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a beautiful day that we have truly been blessed with, with an honor to be here with all of you for this milestone and historic celebration as we officially cut the ribbon, finally, on the first ever Bronx Children's Museum. I want to also begin by acknowledging all of our incredible partners and certainly to Sonia Manzano, to Hope Harley, to Carla Pretch, to uh, as well as Arlene Bascom, to the board members, to my colleagues in government, my predecessors, our former borough president, Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala, also State Senator Jose Serrano, also want to acknowledge Assembly Member Latoya Joyner and Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty. Uh, my colleague, Commissioner Lori Cumbo, thank you so much. And to our Parks Commissioner, Sue Donahue, as well as DDC, and so many other city officials from the mayor's office, as well as our governor's office, thank you so much. Today is truly a great celebration. It is a culmination of 17 years of hard work, of commitment, of consistency, of compassion, of dedication, of tireless efforts, of time, labor, money, love, and investment to get here today. And I am so proud of this moment. This journey has not been easy, but many of you have never given up. You've never given up on all the great possibilities that our children and families rightfully deserve here in the Bronx. Our children deserve their own museum in our borough. And from the start, from 2005, when a group of dedicated individuals came together and had a vision, had an idea, had a dream, it was because of the fundamental principle that our children deserve access and opportunity. The Bronx Children's Museum will truly serve as a beacon of hope and opportunity, a space of artistic expression, of culture, of education, all coming together. And during this 17 year journey, the Bronx Children's Museum did not sit on the sidelines. We have mobile units, we have after school programs and community centers, cornerstones, you know, the work we've done on the high bridge, right, during that 17 year period, we opened the oldest standing walking bridge here in the Bronx. And we've done so much along the way. I am so proud that this day is finally here because of all the work. And I said to my predecessors, there's something about the number three that's very significant and meaningful. This project took three mayors, three mayoral administrations, three city council speakers, three Bronx Borough presidents to get here today. But every step, Every part of this process was worth it if it means that our children have the very best when it comes to their own children's museum. And so I could not be more proud to serve as the Bronx Borough President, number 14, but certainly someone who has been in the trenches with all of you along the way. As a former assembly member, former city council, Remember, we worked together. You remember years ago when the mobile unit broke down and we needed a new one and Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala and I, we came together and we said, let's get it done. And one thing I can truly say about our founding executive director and Carla Pretch, she has truly been persistent throughout this entire 
if there was ever a challenge from the design to the landscape to the furniture, Carla let us know what was necessary to move this project along. You have no chance in the Bronx Children's Museum own Carla Pretch. So I want to say thank you. <laughs> Carla followed us to the halls of Albany, to the halls of City Hall, to really make sure that this project came to fruition. But that's truly what it's all about. Our children deserve to dream big, to think beyond their circumstances, to see all of the great possibilities, to know that their that they are truly destined for great success no matter where they live, no matter what zip code they reside in. Every child in this borough is gifted and talented and full of promise and potential. And this Children's Museum will give them all of those great opportunities. I recall times in the city council when we were talking about addressing gun violence from a holistic perspective and we transformed the programming around arts as a catalyst for change. And Commissioner Cumbo and I always talked about giving our young people paint brushes, giving them ideas and spaces and opportunities for them to express themselves without any judgment, without any criticism. That's what this space is going to be, a safe haven, an opportunity for children and families in our borough to enjoy the beauty of art and culture and education. This site will serve as a global destination, not just for the Bronx, but for the entire city of New York. And think about all of our neighbors, think about a few years, the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Think about this entire area being transformed and starting with the Bronx Children's Museum. So my gratitude, my appreciation to all of you, to the board members, to our executive director, our board chair, to each and every one of you, all the elected officials, for your time, your labor, your investment, and most importantly, never giving up on our great borough. The Bronx Children's Museum is going to be a site for incredible opportunities for generations to come, and I'm so be here. So grateful to see the official opening next month, and I want to say congratulations to everyone, and welcome to the Bronx Museum! Yeah! Yes! Congratulations! Thank you, Sonia. I know. Thank you so much. Now, now, now let's please welcome the very center of the borough president trifecta, uh, 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 please, Ruben Diaz, Jr. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. I, I'm glad that it's been acknowledged that I, of the three of us, have received the brunt of Carla <laughs> and Hope, 13 years. Uh, I'm gonna observe all protocols, and obviously we wanna thank everyone who has been involved in this, all of the city, state agencies, all of the elected officials. Uh, why, why are we here, ladies and gentlemen? Why are we really here? Why was this so important? Do you remember Abuelita's cooking, the smell of it? Do you remember the songs that mommy used to play when she cleaned the house on a Saturday? Even though you hate it, cleaning the house as well. <laughs> Do you remember your favorite teacher? Do you remember when you were younger who your best friend was in whatever PS public school or whatever school you went to? Do you remember your first dog? Do you remember your favorite park or playground? Do you remember your favorite, your first crush? Think about that for a minute. Your first kiss. Do you remember believing in Santa Claus and the tooth fairy? I, I, I ask these questions because here we are, we celebrating brick and mortar, and we deserve this. But what we are truly celebrating is something that you can't see or touch. It is the innocence of childhood. 
It is the only thing that we truly have in common with our children and our grandchildren because we used to be children. They, have, they are not adults yet. And in that innocence, no matter if you were raised in a very poor household, how many of, how many of you here were raised in a poor household? Raise your hand. How many of you experienced hard times when you were little and your family? Raise your hand. But it's still the times that you remember being the best times of your life. It's this thing called being a child. Being a, it's like for me, aside from or in addition to a good hip hop song, the, the, my favorite thing to hear is whenever I, when the weather gets warm and you're driving down the Bronx and there's a playground or a schoolyard and the kids are playing mm -hmm. and you know that they're different children in different areas but the sound is always the same, children playing together. And so what we want is to celebrate and make sure that here families can come and, and, and build memories and, and solidify and fortify that innocent childhood spirit that unfortunately continues to deteriorate in this day and age. That spirit of imagination, that spirit of, of playing make-believe, that spirit when your child says, mommy, mommy, look, or daddy, daddy, look, look what I can do. and and. It's really not, let's be honest, maybe not that spectacular. <laughs> but it means the world to them when you take that moment to see how they did a flip or how they jumped into the swimming pool or how they shot a basketball. It's, it, it's that, that, that naivete, that childhood, that no matter who we are in this room, no matter what our occupation is, no matter how old we are, no matter where we come from, we all have. It's a blessing that we were given. And so collectively, we believe in that. Collectively, we work so hard to make sure that we create a space to celebrate that. And in this same space, different families with different children from different walks of life will come and have their own interpretation of what that memory or what that time or what that feeling will ultimately be for that child or those children when they become our age. But it's the most priceless thing in the world. And so that is why um, I was so proud as the borough president to be a part of this for 13 years. That's why my Kumbara teach Marco Crespo and I have made sure that Dr. Oswald and Montefiore has made a multi-year commitment to this place. That is why now I am so happy that my brother Sammy will be able to bring his grandson Grace in here. And so to all of the children from the Bronx and beyond, you give them that space where they can celebrate that innocence and they can celebrate that spirit and that feeling, move out the way, they'll conquer the world. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ruben. Okay, we're getting poetic here now. All right, so thank you for those lovely words, and it's a perfect segue to uh, Senator uh, Honorable Jose Serra. Um, uh, I remember he told me years ago about um, his mother leaving the television on because she was lonely, and he also introduced me to that idea of politicians as poets. So uh, it's perfectly uh, wonderful to introduce you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it really is such an honor to be here. And I'd like to thank all of my colleagues in government, uh, everyone here, Commissioner Cumbo, all of your dedication to the arts and culture uh, throughout the Bronx and throughout the city. And listening to my friends here to former Borough President Ruben Diaz and my dear friend, current Borough President Vanessa Gibson. Um, it really, it, it sort of, uh, it brings about a lot of emotion because uh, we uh, live in a very special time if we seize the opportunity. One of the things that um, 
Ruben Diaz uh, and I shared together is that we both went to PS31 right up the block uh, in the 70s. We grew up very similar situations. We saw what the Bronx uh, unfortunately had become at that time because of disinvestment, because it had been redlined, because of so many systemic reasons why the Bronx was the way that it was. And, and seeing Ruben's tenure uh, as an elected official and sort of this overarching uh, desire to have nice things. We deserve nice things in the borough of the Bronx. Why not us? And, and, and I, I, I'm sort of clumsily saying that, but um, I, I think in a more poetic way, if I was poetic, um, it would be to say that um, we deserve as good, if not better, than any other part of the city of New York. We have been a foundation for new immigrants for generations. We have been a place to welcome with open arms. And uh, I think this is an, an amazing tribute to that. Uh, this museum, which I know was a labor of love for Carla, for Sonia, for so many people, um, and at and, and its beginning phases, I was thinking to myself, how are they going to pull all this together? <laughs> it's, it sounds brilliant. It sounds great. I want to help it. How can we make this happen? Uh, and at the time, I was uh, a, a parent for the first time. I, my, my little boy, who's 16 now, who's still my little boy, but uh, he's, he's uh, everyone knows Carlos, and my daughter, who's 10, I thought to myself, how spectacular would it be for us to have a brilliant, welcoming, colorful, bright, and important museum here in the Bronx? Now, I have the good fortune of living in the neighborhood. I have seen what the cultural corridor commissioner that is continuing to build in this neighborhood, what it means for this neighborhood with the Hip Hop Museum, with Pregones Puerto Rican Traveling Theater, with Ostos Community College, with all of its artistic programming. I have felt stronger than ever before in my belief that the arts and culture are so transformative for communities. And indeed, the artists and the arts have been historically a vehicle for social justice and social change. They have been able to plant the seeds when others were afraid to do so of questioning why things that were not right were the, were the way that they were. And a place like this, while it brings about inspiration and education and gets kids interested in science and math and the arts, will also show them that there is a legacy of the arts being that vehicle for social justice and social change and hopefully continuing that going forward. So to all my, my colleagues, council member, all of you, thank you so much for all that you've done to make this happen. And I look forward to it being a major pillar and beacon in this community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Art for social justice. That's a great phrase, and I hope that we all remember it. And that said, we'd like to welcome the Honorable Diana Ayala. I know, it feels like a reunion in here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I mean, we have been married to this project for many years. So I was a staffer when we started, and I feel like we have to send Annabelle Palma a picture because we spent a lot of time talking about this at Bronx Delegation. Um, oh, my God, but I feel so nostalgic. This is, a, this is really personal, um, and it's very bittersweet because I, I, it took so long to get here, but I wanted to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Ruben Diaz was, was, was sharing with you, and I think... Um, you know, my story is not very different than, and most of our stories is not very different than the kids that live and reside specifically in this part of the Bronx, which I um, gladly represent. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite parts of my district because it has a lot of, um, a lot of need, but reminds me, right, of where I came from and the challenges that I and my family overcame. Um, but I'll tell you, I, my, mother, my mother moved us here from Puerto Rico when I was five years old and we uh, landed in the Lower East Side. Um, we were really, really, really poor, and she could barely afford to buy us food. So we relied on, you know, pantries to help subsidize uh, meals at home. And I spent a little bit of my time at the library because it was the only place for me to go because my, my world was really like maybe 
I don't know, 20 block radius, right? We didn't know anything outside of the Lower East Side. We really didn't. To the point that, funny story, not so funny, when I was a teenager, my friends convinced me to go camping at Woodlawn. And I had no idea what Woodlawn was. So I went and it was, it was dark and I didn't know where we were, but we were in the woods somewhere and we camped the whole weekend and we did that twice. And then as an adult, I lived at Kingsbridge, West Kingsbridge, and I was taking the four train, my first time taking the four train to Kingsbridge. And I realized the last stop was Woodlawn. And I was like, we were camping behind the cemetery the whole time. <laughs> Probably, I'm sure, illegally. Um, but that, that is really reminiscent of right how sheltered we are and how um, inexperienced we are with the world around us. I mean, just a few blocks make a huge difference. So for me, this museum is, is, uh, is really something that I'm proud of. Um, and I wanna thank Carla, who by the way, scared the bejesus out of all of us. We're all really scared of Carla. <laughs> She, you know, I, I, every time that Carla called, we were like, whatever she wants, just give it to her. Because she's going to be persistent. But thank you for that. Because if it wasn't for those efforts, we wouldn't be here today. And quite frankly, the fact that we're in the heart of the borough and that our children do not have to leave, right, their place of residence to visit something so beautiful um, is really something that I'm proud of, to be a part of, and I know that my colleagues are as well. So congratulations, and I look forward to coming with my grandchildren when they come and visit. It's a beautiful, beautiful space, um, but thank you, because I know that it wasn't an easy road. Um, muchísimas gracias, and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm struck that this event is uh, making everybody remember their childhoods and is so uh, reminiscent of where they grew up and what they needed. And that certainly is, is meaningful and we should remember that. And that said, I'd like to please welcome Sue Donahue, Commissioner, New York City Parks. Thank you so much, and I am so thrilled to be here. I am New York City Parks Commissioner Sue Donahue, and interestingly enough, I was at the Parks Department years ago in the Bloomberg administration, and I remember walking this building and saying, how are we gonna make this happen? And here it has happened, and how amazing is that? We are just so thrilled at the Parks Department because this museum is a partner of ours, both literally and in spirit. Housed on New York City Parks property, in a former powerhouse, the Bronx Children's Museum is, in fact, a powerhouse. It provides children with interactive places to learn and play, having operated with and now, without and now with walls. And as we heard, these interactive spaces are so important for all of us, for all of our kids, all across the city. Like parks, this new museum space will advance equity, education, and partnership, and give kids in the Bronx the museum space they deserve. And we couldn't be more excited to celebrate this accomplishment and this partnership today. For years, the museum has met kids where they are, visiting schools and the community, using a big purple bus as a mobile learning environment. And at parks, we know how important recreational spaces are for children, giving them places to grow and play safely, teaching them new skills and stimulating their minds. This milestone ribbon cutting is the culmination of years of hard work. And I'd like to thank all of the partners for delivering on this brand new museum. I'd like to give a big shout out, as has already been said, but to all of the folks from the Bronx Museum, Hope Harley, Carla Precht, Arlene Bascombe, and all of the wonderful staff whose perseverance really made this happen. I'd also like to recognize our very own first deputy commissioner at the Parks Department, Iris Rodriguez-Rosa. Um, uh, 
she she unfortunately couldn't be here today. She is on a very well-deserved vacation, but I know that she is here in spirit, and this museum means so much to her personally. So I'm here to represent her and to send her regards because she is so excited about this happening. And I'd like to recognize and thank the support of so many elected officials and departments, including the New York City Department of Design and Construction, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and their great commissioner, Lori Combo, my partner in the city. Former Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., who spoke so beautifully about the importance of parks. Our great Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson, who's been such a supporter of all things parks and open spaces. Our council member Diana Ayala, thank you so much and assembly member Latoya Joyner, um, who is also, I know, very closely involved in this project, and really everyone who here today who believed in this project and who helped to make it a reality. Thank you all once again, and it is truly my pleasure to welcome the Bronx Children's Museum into their new home. I know that this Bronx Children's Museum has many great exhibits in store, and I urge everyone from every corner of the city to come out and enjoy this new place for learning on December 3rd when it officially opens to the public. Thank you all so much, and congratulations. Thank you so much. You know, we're living in such a harsh society that art and culture aren't words that are on the table often. The last president who cared about art was President Kennedy, and that was in the 60s. So, so the fact that we are bringing art and culture to the forefront is very important, and that gives me great pleasure to introduce Lori Cumbo, who is Commissioner, New York of Cultural Affairs. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I came uh, via by way of Staten Island, and so we are going to have to find some easier ways to get here from Staten Island. That was quite a journey. But I am so happy to be here. I had an opportunity to go on a tour with my son maybe about three months ago where I met Carla, and I got a taste of the Carla energy, and I thought it was a personal thing, but it seems everyone has <laughs> experienced it. I thought maybe I didn't come in with the right moxie, and she's kind of got me all about what I need to do. So everyone has experienced it, so I feel great about that. Um, this is really, as, as, as was stated by so many, and I want to keep it as brief as I can, because in the city council, they would always say that Vanessa and I were the longest speaking members in the council, and people would do things like time it to see who was longest. <laughs> so I want to keep it brief. But every time I see my brothers and sisters in government at a ribbon cutting, at an event where we're unveiling something, at a groundbreaking. It is so emotional because I know each of them very personally and to know the stories of how they came to be an elected leader is really a challenging one. And when you hear their stories about their families and how they came to New York City and the struggles that they went to to obtain these positions, and really in so many ways, nobody ever thought that these black and brown elected leaders would ever rise to the level to be able to put together projects like this and to support them and to fund them. So it's really very emotional when we're all together in these spaces because I know the struggle, I know the challenges that you have faced, I know the challenges that I have faced, and even when, and Ruben said this, he said like how many of us grew up in poor households, right? I didn't raise my hand, but then I didn't want everybody looking at me like, oh, she's kind of bougie then, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I go by what Bob Marley said, right? And he said, some people are so poor that all they have is money, uh, right? And what you described, Ruben, with your mom and your dad and the cleaning of the house and the rituals and the playgrounds and all of that, that is such a great wealth. You're healthy, we're here, we're striving, we're doing our thing. So yes, I did come from the same households, but I but I but I see I see the love in my household as something that's so valuable. And what's also so incredible about this moment is that 
we as elected leaders rose to this level to be able to put together a project of this caliber and scale with the dynamic leadership of Carla and the board of directors and everyone. But imagine what our children will ascend to when they have institutions like this that we didn't grow up with. The things that we are putting in place are institutions and opportunities that were never even possible or fathomable when we were younger. We are really recreating the realities for our young people in terms of what's possible and what's achievable. And that's why this institution is so important and perfect at this moment. The Bronx needs investment like never before. And I'm so pleased that I'm exercising this muscle to support the Bronx because I had been exercising it for Brooklyn for so long that it's so incredible to see this citywide approach and to have our mayor, Eric Adams, to recognize that we elected leaders are putting 40 Point three million dollars into this museum that we have the power and the capability of making those types of decisions with our tax paying dollars so I'm here to present a proclamation on behalf of Mayor Eric Adams and I would love if Arlene and Carla would join me I am NOT going to read the whole proclamation because we want to get to this ribbon cutting I'll just read the first sentence. Whereas the five boroughs soar on the strength of our homegrown talent and innate ambition, as our city's youth begin their journeys to become the next generation of firefighters, physicists, small business owners, visionaries, and more, we all must work together to provide a wide range of learning opportunities that have the potential to ignite their imagination. Whereas, in addition to the Bronx Children's Museum allows young scholars to explore the creative arts with equal care through initiatives such as Dream Big and Art Spot. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, I, Eric Adams, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 16th, 2022, in the city of New York as Bronx Children's Museum's <laughs> Ribbon Cutting Day. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That's terrific. So hang in there. We're in the home stretch. This is, this is it. Stick around so you can take a walk through the museum when we're done. And we're going to hear from Salvatore Cali Jr. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here to celebrate the new permanent location of the Bronx Children's Museum. Um, DDC, together with DCLA and NYC uh, Parks, uh, manage this construction. And it's going to provide uh, educational experiences for many, for the community of the uh, Bronx for many years to come. Uh, inspired by um, Jean Paget's book, Child Conception of Space, the museum the museum remains open and accessible throughout and connects children to the experience of natural landscape and the Harlem River waterfront. Uh, the design creates a balance between open spaces and prioritizing uh, visitor security. For the many parents and guardians that visit every day, uh, low petitions maximizes visibility and makes it easier for caregivers to keep an eye on the children. Uh, to promote physical activity, 
The museum was designed according to the New York City active design guidelines and has built-in benches to provide rest areas along the way. Work also included the installation of new mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. With the fantastic work done by the architects, O'Neill McVoy, and the contractor, AQuest Corporation. Great job on them. Uh, the project is slated to achieve LEED Silver certification. Um, I want to thank our commissioner, Thomas Foley. He's unable to be here today, but we have our first deputy commissioner, Eric McFarlane, here in the house. would also like to acknowledge uh, the many dedicated DDC team that worked on this. Um, our boots on the ground, our project manager, Rudley Tolger, led by our assistant commissioner, Michael Nastasi, our um, program director, Irene Alpert, the deputy director, Devang Campagna, um, our ADA compliance director, Jason Wood, and we have folks from uh, our finance and procurement that help with the contracts and payments and making sure the contractors get paid. And that includes uh, Stella Sinartini, um, Sundari Chakalingam, and Guadalupe Lopez. Thank you all. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner of Public Buildings. I appreciate you being here today. So um, we're going to hear next from uh, Carla Precht herself. And um, but so let me preface this that when I heard that she was leaving her position at the museum, I was frankly stunned. I couldn't believe why anyone would want to carry a boulder on their shoulders up a mountain for over 10 years and then get to the top and then leave it. I mean, I, I really was surprised. I didn't know why she would do that. But then sitting here and listening to you all, I'm recalling how when I was growing up, there were no people of color on television. It was unheard of. Uh, and, uh, and then I became one of the early people of color on television in, in, in 69. And now I'm passing that forward to other people of, of color on television. So I'm, I'm, I'm still a little stunned, but I guess that now I understand it better that you take this boulder up there or you are the first and then you get it done and then the thing to do is to pass it on to other people so that they could carry on as we all will or you all will the younger people in this audience and the younger people who must get involved with what's going on it has to be the younger people and uh so that said I'm sorry I won't have Carla to hound me anymore. And, uh, and I can sincerely promise you, Carla, that we will do our best to continue the work that you have begun. Thank you. Please take the stage. I, I really am speechless. I, I really am. I know you probably don't believe that, but I'm really feeling <laughs> speechless. And uh, it has been a beautiful journey. And, uh, you know, all the thanks that everybody else has already expressed can't really do it. Um, you know, this is your museum. You know, this is your museum. You should thank yourself as well. And for that, I would like you to put your hands up. Okay, put your, Carla says put your hands up. Now put your hands around you. Give yourself a big hug from yourself and from us at the Bronx Children's Museum. 
And I didn't really know I had such a reputation, by the way. I, I mean, Ruben, Ruben has said it over the years, but I, I mean, today it was sort of like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, but you know there there are a number of things that still have to get done, um, and and we're hoping we're hoping in the next month um, that we are going to make some real headway with our CIG request, our request for um, cultural institution group funding, and we also have a um, a neighborhood that is a little on the dangerous side when it comes to pedestrian safety, and um, the uh, commissioner Lori Cumbo is going to actually be heading up. Um, bringing together the entities that uh, we've identified as being responsible for these what we call hot spots. Um, so there's there's a few things I'd like to do before I leave, but I have to say it's been the honor of my life, and it's been my child. It's my been my I'm sorry, it's that my third child. I have two girls, and um, but I'll tell you this staff and the board, but particularly staff, I really have to say, and I, really, I would like them to come up here. If every one of you could come up here, please, yeah. staff. Yeah. Everyone. And I mean it to, to Keisha. Okay, to Keisha's getting a few people out there. Um, okay, okay. Every, Every time that my name came up or, you know, the appreciation that you all have expressed has come up, um, it really needs to be shared with, with all these people here and more. There are actually more, more people. Um, but this group... Uh, did I see Jamal? Okay. Um, this group is my family, and I don't want to leave my family. I'm shaking a little bit right now, but they're holding me up. Um, and I just want to thank everybody here and this amazing staff for your leadership, your commitment. You know, it's, it is, it's never been difficult in my mind to sort of answer that question, well, why do we do this? Well, we do this. It's simple. It's because we love the children and we love the Bronx. And there's so much in the Bronx that most people really don't understand or know about. And one of our missions is really to connect the families that come here to the Bronx and to acknowledge the riches that are here in the Bronx. And you are the riches in the Bronx yourselves. So thank you very much for everything. We, we definitely need a picture, but I also think that John Boudreau, who's our director of marketing and communications, after we leave, um, we have to, if, if it's okay with you, we'd like to take some important pictures. Uh, we want to be able to take the um, photo, the ceremonial photo of the cutting of the ribbon with, I think, three groups. And then, then please, 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 we want you to experience the museum. Now, you won't be able to experience it in the way that it ought to be experienced with a child, except maybe one child that I see here. Oh, there are a few children in the back, too. OK. Um, but please come back if you don't have your children today, and, and or, or bring your niece, or you know, you're, you're welcome here always. Uh, and, um, but we will have this period of time right after the photos where you can wander around. So please do. All right, thank you everybody. Again, I'm John Boudreau. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for the museum. And I just need to say this is an awesomely proud moment for all of us today. And thank you so much for being here and helping us realize the dream that we have been going after for so long. So thank you very much. So this is a great opportunity. Everybody wants to get their shots, and I want to make sure everybody gets the shots they want. So uh, we're going to do this in two sessions, and uh, definitely want all the audience members to get their shots, but we definitely want the press to get their shots, because we love the publicity. Uh, so in order to make this work for everybody, um, 
we're going to have the first shot. We're going to move the podium to the side. I'd like all the speakers to come up behind the ribbon itself, uh, including Sonia Manzano, please, and Arlene and Hope, please come up. Uh, and we'll take that first shot and do a press shot, and then I'll invite any audience members that want to come up to the front to get that same shot, and we'll do kind of a faux ribbon cutting because everybody wants that shot. And then the second shot we'll do with board members coming up and anybody else that um, is part of the organizations and the agencies that would like to be uh, a part of the picture. And that will include the architects and Beth and Chris from O'Neill McVoy to come up. Carly had. Um, can you just let us know who's here from press? Sure. So representing press today, we have Norwood News. We have ABC7 that is here today. We have New York One that is with us today. We have News 12 Bronx. We have BronxNet that is here today. And who am I not recognizing? Riverdale Press. Yes, Riverdale Press came in uh, in the middle of our ceremony. So we're very happy to have them here too. So uh, I will start by having the podium moved over to the side. And if the speakers can make their way up front and get behind the ribbon. Behind the ribbon itself. Not where the podium, but behind the ribbon. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay! 